holy night, a night of stars and angels, a night of shepherds and sheep, and a family in a stable. Tonight we celebrate in remembrance of the birth of our Savior, the holy child of Bethlehem. But we also come knowing that we are called to prepare, to serve, and to strengthen our faith each day. For one day, Jesus will return. We welcome you to this service and remind you that all aspects of this service, including Holy Communion, are offered to all who are with us this night. So I invite you to take a moment, look around this beautiful sanctuary, stand up and greet one another with the peace of Christ. <laughs>
Gospel of Luke tells how Mary meets her cousin Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the child leaped in her womb. And Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit and exclaimed with a loud cry, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. God speaks to us in many ways through dreams, visions, new ideas, and the kicking of a baby not yet born. We light the fourth candle asking that we may hear God's call in our body, our mind, and our spirit. Living Christ, give us faith to trust you, hope to follow you, and love to live you, and wisdom to know you. Please join with me in the response. We trust you, we love you, we praise you. Amen. unusual year, because the fourth Sunday of Advent falls on Christmas Eve. Some congregations handle this by changing the schedule, but we stuck to the tradition. Each week, we have lighted the candles. The first candle was hope. We have really needed hope this year. And yet, we've had a hard time finding it. So many in our congregation and in our community have struggled through economic distress, through grief, through illness, through aging. We have dealt with devastating diagnoses and treatments and the deaths of those we love. We have struggled to learn to live without their presence each day. The Reynolds and Dobbins family, the Shattucks, the Trawicks, the Hardwicks, the Grimes. These families have certainly experienced the darkness of loss and the depths of sadness. The second candle is the candle of peace. Our peace has been shattered. There have been over 630 mass shootings in our nation this year. Since 2020, we have averaged nearly two a day. The Ukrainian people have struggled with war and death every single day of this year with no end in sight. Then on October 7th, horror occurred in Israel and Gaza, and it continues to this day. The city of Bethlehem normally lights a candle of peace to mark the Christmas season, but not this year. This year, they will not celebrate. The third candle is the candle of joy. When I dare to turn on the news each day, I hear nothing about joy. I hear about anger about hatred, about prejudice, about greed, and about power. I hear grievances and a lot of whining. I hear outrageous accusations and ridiculous calls to execute politicians or judges that we don't like. Where is joy in that? Today, we lit the candle of love. 
in a country where families will not even speak to each other due to political opinions, many of which are not even based in reality. How do you talk about love in a church when we're tearing each other apart? How do you talk about love in a denomination that has spent its entire year tearing congregations apart about who is a better follower of Jesus Christ? It is so discouraging. But today, Tonight, I have good news to share with you. It doesn't have to be that way. We don't have to live in the dark. Tonight, we're here to celebrate that the light has come into the world and the darkness, no matter how mean or bleak or violent or destructive, that darkness will never, never overcome it. So please stand as the light of Christ comes back into the sanctuary to bring us hope, peace, joy, and love. Let us sing.
mom say, I'm on my last straw? How many have heard somebody say, I'm on my last straw? Just about everybody. Well, this is a story of a camel. Do you know what a camel is? What is a camel? An animal. Uh, is he kind of like a horse, except he has really much taller legs? And what does he have on his back that's different? A big lump. Well, this is about a camel, and his name is Hosh Makaka. Can you say that? Well, you did it great. Hosh Makaka. Let's see if the grown ups can say it. Hosh Makaka. Sally, you've had practice. <laughs> well, he was a very old camel, and he was asleep in the desert at night when he suddenly heard a voice. And he called his name. Reluctantly, he opened one eye, and he heard his voice again, and he opened the other eye. The sand whirled around in the moonlit sky. You had been chosen. And the sand seemed to shift again. You will carry gifts to a baby king. Who are you? He wanted to know, for he was an old camel and felt he had earned his sleep. You will carry frankincense and myrrh and gold, and the wise men have chosen you. So he got up very slowly. Why me? If these men are so wise, don't they know about my aching joints, my gout, my sciatica? What do you say I to carry? How much will it weigh? Besides, I have other commitments. There's a water drinking competition in Rangal, and then I must go to the blood chewing convention in Beach. The sand blew furiously. Who knew what made that sand move like creatures with great wings? So he decided he better do what the sand says. When do I start? To that, today. And with that, the sand voices disappeared. So it was still early as servants of the wise men placed the precious gifts on his back. See, it's just gold, frankincense, and rum. And you must be a very special camel, they said. I am very special. I'm not so old. I'm still as strong as ten horses, and I have been chosen to carry rich gifts to the king. Can we come too, asked the youngest camel. Aren't we your friends? You can walk beside me. And so the long journey begins. At noon, they met a herd of, you know what these are? Goats, mountain goats. And you know what they wanted? They had a gift for the king, too. It's milk for the king. You want me to carry milk, he said. I'm not a milk-bearing camel. I'm not ordinary like you. But the young camel spoke up. No, he's not ordinary. He's strong while he's strong as ten horses. So he muttered to himself, Oh, my joints. Oh, my gal. Oh, my sciatica. Give me your gift. And then at one o'clock, he was stopped by a family of millers. You know what they had? You know what a miller is? They had ground corn that they wanted to take. They'll have to carry it themselves. And they'll follow the star like the rest of us. And then the young camels looked at him and said, but you're so strong. And Hashimataka said, okay, give me your gifts, I'll carry them. At 2 o'clock the next day, the young ladies gave him fine silks. And he said, well, at least, at least, the material is not so heavy. And at 3 o'clock, an old man gave him fine clothes and two rare birds in cages. I think he's getting called up here, huh? At 5 o'clock, or at 4 o'clock, some merchants gave him pillars of oak that came all the way from Lebanon. And at 5 o'clock, a group of bakers gave him their finest sweet meats and pastries. He's really getting loaded up now. At 6 o'clock, the sun went down, and he went to sleep. 
but he was aware it wasn't as dark as usual because what was there in the sky? A star. But the next day, it was hard to remember the one of that star, and the next day brought new pains and new burdens. Word of the caravan had spread like the sand, and people were lining up with all kinds of gifts. Then the youngest camel cried out, Look, it's Bethlehem. You've made it. You're as strong as ten horses. But Hashemakaka knew he just couldn't do it if he did not stop until he arrived at the spot beneath the stars. He could. He knew he could. And then out of the darkness came a tiny little voice. I have a gift for the baby. And it was somebody told me about your age. It has no way. It's long and wise for the king who's born this night. It's little. Didn't I hear you say you were as strong as ten camels? Well, yes. Yes, child, give it to me. This smaller than small gift. What harm can it do? It's for his bed. It's all I need. No problem at all. All this time he had kept walking because he knew if he stopped he couldn't start again. And now he could see the star shone upon a lowly stable. Child, do it now. Place your straw on my back as I approach the new king. He entered the stable. Look at all this. Look at everything they've got. That's a lot of stuff, isn't it? Oh, my. And he fell down to <laughs> his knees. My back is breaking. My back is breaking. Will this last straw cause me to fall? And then the wise men noticed him kneeling, and so they knelt too. And he thought, well, they're mocking you, falling on their knees, head bent over like gnarled old trees. Then, from the humble manger, a tiny hand reached out and touched him. His pain disappeared. He could no longer feel his burden, and he whispered to the baby, Hosanna, accept this gift time. They come from far and wide, brought by a beast, who wants to act his life. And from that time on, there was no burden, great or small, that he did not gladly carry. That's the end. So I've got a Christmas book for each family.
if somebody didn't get one. Here this well-known story of old is translated in the message. About that time, Caesar Augustus ordered a census to be taken throughout the empire. This was the first census where Quirinius was governor of Syria. Everyone had to travel to his own ancestral hometown to be accounted for. So Joseph went from the Galilean town of Nazareth up to Bethlehem in Judah, David's town for the census. As a descendant of David, he had to go there. He went with Mary, his fiancée, who was pregnant. While they were there, the time came for her to give birth. She gave birth to a son, her firstborn. She wrapped him in a blanket, and she laid him in a manger because there was no room at the inn. There were shepherds camping in the neighborhood. They had set night watch over their sheep, and suddenly God's angels stood among them, and God's glory blazed around them. They were terrified. The angel said, Don't be afraid. I'm here to announce a great and joyful event. It's meant for everyone worldwide. A Savior has just been born in David's town, a Savior who is the Messiah and Master. And this is what you're going to look for, a baby wrapped in a blanket, lying in a manger. And at once the angel was joined by a huge angelic chorus singing God's praises. Glory to God in the heavenly heights. Peace to all men and women on earth who please him. As the angel choir withdrew into the heaven, the shepherds talked it over. Let's go over to Bethlehem as fast as we can and see for ourselves what God has revealed to us. They left running and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in the manger. Seeing was believing. They told everyone they met what the angel said about this child, and all who heard the shepherds were impressed. But Mary kept these things to herself, holding them dear, deep within herself. The shepherd returned and let loose, glorifying and praising God for everything they had heard and seen. It turned out exactly the way they'd been told. This is the word of God for the people of God. Let us pray. May your scripture always be my delight, O Lord. May I not be deceived in them or deceived by them. Amen. Bethlehem. The northern kingdoms of Israel contain the ancestral territories of 10 out of the 12 tribes. But the kingdom to the south, Judah, only contained the territories of two tribes, <coughs> Judah and Benjamin. Benjamin was the area surrounding Bethlehem. It was the smallest tribe of all of them, and hence the smallest plot of land. But don't let that fool you into thinking that it was not important. From this tribe came David, the great Israelite king. And God made David a big promise. From his line, from his lineage, from his house, the Messiah would come. The prophet Micah confirmed it. The Messiah would be born in the city of David. The Messiah would be born in Bethlehem. So, even if it's 2,000 years later and Christ hasn't been born, but he's born today, he would still be born in Bethlehem. But it would be a very different Bethlehem. You see, Bethlehem today is this territory called the West Bank. It has a wall around it. Not a wall like ancient Jerusalem. A wall that's more modern. That's been built in the last 20 to 30 years. The wall is 8 meters or 26 feet tall, and it separates Bethlehem from Jerusalem. It separates Bethlehem from Israel. I've seen it. It's hideous. Christians once comprised 80% of the town of Bethlehem, but the 
back and forth between Muslim Palestinians and Israeli Jews has isolated those Christians to the point that they're down to 40% and they only survive with tourism. And this is the time of their main tourist event. This is their biggest tourist season of the year when they light the peace candle at the Church of the Nativity. But they chose not to light it this year, for there is no peace, and leaders wanted to be truthful and honest about where we are in our world today. Jesus' birth is celebrated around the world. We sing carols as well. We decorate our homes, some very tasteful, and some, well, you sing the arts. We watch Hallmark movies. Well, maybe you watch Hallmark movies. We have commercialized Christmas, and yet, and yet, no matter how much we commercialize Christmas, no matter how much peace is shattered across the earth, no matter how much we've destroyed goodwill towards men with our divisions among us, we have never, never managed to ruin Christmas, have we? Frederick Buechner calls it a miracle, and I agree. And sometimes we see that miracle and it overwhelms us and sometimes we miss it almost like the telling of the story. Frederick Beaker tells a story about a young clergy couple. And clergy are just like you are. They decorate their homes. They put out uh, the Christmas cookies for Santa. They decorate trees. They tuck the children in bed who are all in anticipation of the coming morning. And then they fall exhausted into bed. And just as they were falling into bed, this young clergyman remembered that he had promised his neighbor to look after the sheep while he was out of town. So he put his clothes back on and he walked through knee deep snow to the next home, went to the barn, pulled out a couple of bales of hay, <coughs> and headed to the shed. There's a 40 watt light bulb, so a very dim light, hanging by its cord from the low roof, so he turns it on. And the sheep are huddled in the corner as he snaps the baling wire and shakes the squares of hay apart and starts scattering them. Of course, when he does that, the sheep come bumbling and shoving to get at it with their foolish, mild faces, with puffs of their breath, exploding in the cold night air. He's reaching to turn off that light and leave, and suddenly, he realizes where he is. The winter darkness, the glimmer of light, the smell of hay, and the sounds of animals eating. He's in the manger. He's in, of course, the manger. And he almost missed it. He only just barely saw it. It's his business, it's us, our business as clergy to see these things, to have an eye. But that night, his eye was kind of busy or blind. He who on his best days believes that everything that is most precious anywhere come from that manger. Might have easily gone home to bed never realizing that he himself had been in the manger. Our world is a manger, is it not? It is only by grace that he happens to see this other part of the miracle. And Christmas itself is grace. It could never have survived our own blindness otherwise. It could never have happened otherwise. 
perhaps it is the very wildness and strangeness of the grace that has led us to try and tame it. We've tried to make it habitable. We've roofed it in and furnished it. We've reduced it to an occasion where we feel at home with, at best, a touching and beautiful occasion, or at worst, a trite and cloying one. But if Christmas in itself is indeed, as a matter of cold hard fact, is all it's cracked up to be, then even at our best, our efforts are misleading. <clears throat> Friends, on that night the Word became flesh. Ultimate mystery barn with the skull you could crush one-handed. Incarnation is not tame, it's not touching, it's not beautiful. It is unimaginable terror. It's unthinkable darkness riven with unbearable light. Agonized labor led to it. Vast upheavals of intergalactic space and time split apart, and a wrenching and tearing of the very sinews of reality itself happened that night. You can only cover your eyes and shudder before it. God of God, light of light, very God of very God, who for us and our salvation, as the Nicene Creed puts it, came down from heaven came down. Only then do we dare uncover our eyes and see what we can see. In Mary's arms that night is the resurrection and the life. And we cannot ruin that. Not with violence. Not with indifference. Not with our greed or pain. God is with us. The light has come into the world, and the darkness will never overcome it. It's not just a promise. It's a fact. And that is enough. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, let us pray. God of bright and shining stars, we come this evening with reminiscences of old stories in our hearts. For many here, the story has been heard numerous times, flooding their lives with warmth and love. For others, the story is new. Surprising, causing wonder and surprise. All around us are symbols and reminders of this miraculous birth. In this world in which your holy land is in such turmoil, shed your light anew. That your healing love may bring peace and hope to people in conflict. We ask that you protect all those who are in harm's way. All those whose lives in anguish, poverty, and oppression. We ask your loving presence to be with those who refuse to believe in you, who see your word through the church as a tradition, but see very little impact in their daily lives. Let the light of Jesus Christ penetrate the darkness of alienation and bring hope and peace to all your people. May the light of the stars which sparkled in those dark nights again illumine our life, guiding, healing, and leading us to you. Blessed God. As we gather at this time and place, hearing the story of the birth, remind us again that you are born continually in our lives. In gratitude, we offer our praise and our love to you. Amen. Could the ushers please come forth? <coughs> We are mindful of the supreme gift you gave us in the manger in Bethlehem. Humbly we offer our gifts of service and possessions in joyful thanksgiving for the love you have shown us. Accept these gifts for the sake of your Son, who was born to us, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
one another. Holy are you, and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. As Mary and Joseph went from Galilee to Bethlehem and found no room, so Jesus went from Galilee to Jerusalem and was despised and rejected. As the poverty of a stable, Jesus was born, and by the baptism of the suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night you gave us self up for us, you took the bread, you blessed it, and you broke it. And you gave it to your disciples and said, This is my body. Take, eat. It is given to you. Do it in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup of blessing, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples, and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant. Pour it out for you and for many for the forgiveness of your sins. Drink this, and when you do, remember me. And so, in remembrance of these God's mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us. Let us pray. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one in Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, until Christ comes in final victory, and we feast at his heaven banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and your Holy Church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Would those serving tonight please come forward?
We thank you for this holy meal, for inviting us to set, accept Jesus' gift of himself, and for asking us to taste and see how much Jesus loves us. We thank you for this holy night, for the glad songs we sing and the gifts of love we receive. Help us to give ourselves in love and joy. In the name of Jesus, our Savior. Amen. This is no ordinary night. This is not just the birth of a baby boy, although that is always a joyous occasion. This is God with us. This is God within us. This is God refusing to let darkness rule. Among the abuse of power and the midst of pain and suffering, hope is conceived. Peace has given a birth cry. Joy blinks his eyes out of the world. Love has come down this Christmas. Christ is being born into our world tonight. I invite you to stand as I go down the aisle. We will sing together Silent Night.